What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 11th of June in 2019, in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching here, and one that you saw in the title of today's video, we're going to be diving into that one as well, which is a very, very good candidate right now uh, for a breakout based on some technicals that I'm seeing. So before we do get into the topics of today's video, all I ask from you guys out there, the viewers, the subscribers, is if you enjoy the content, you find value in this content, you find it helpful, go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you want to be further connected with our community, there are two links down below in the the description box, one of them being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group. So let's just get into it today, guys. The S&P 500, we finally saw a flat day. We finally saw a day today where we didn't climb up. We didn't gap up again. We can see the S&P actually closed red today, down a dollar and one cents at the close, down 0.03%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average ended up closing red as well, down 14 points here, down 0.05%. And the NASDAQ here is down about $1.75 right now. We peaked at about 7600 today, and we sold off all the way down nearly 100 points, a bit over 100 points actually, to 7495 and we closed roughly at about 7518 So it was a bit of a sell-off today. Well, the closing price doesn't really um, tell us that the market sold off, but if you guys were paying attention, we actually gapped up this morning, the futures were up, we gapped up, and from there, we ended up selling off pretty aggressively, and if we go on the one day, one minute chart on the S&P, and we look at, you know, some key price action here, we notice exactly that, we closed yesterday at about 28.85, we gapped up about 25 points at the peak to 29.10, and then we started to swing all the way back down. Down, and we actually briefly broke the support from yesterday, which was at about 28.85. So this is a pretty uh, interesting key technical spot for the S&P, like we talked about in yesterday's video. And we actually ended up closing right above the 28.85 level of support. And you may be asking yourself, what level of support is that? Well, it's the level from right here back, uh, what month was this? The beginning of, towards the middle of the April month of 2019, we ended up kind of plateauing where we are right now, and from there, we made that truck to the all-time highs, making this level a support, right? And now, since we did close above 28.85, we're still trading in the range from 28.85 up to the resistance at about 29.10, 29.15, where we actually ended up getting rejected at today guys take a look if we go on the 30 day 90 minute you guys can see this a bit better notice how we gapped up to 29 10 29 15 got rejected there today we pulled down we held this level as a new support at the close of the market or as a support at the close of the market which is a good sign now tomorrow this is going to be very interesting are we going to continue this pullback here and maybe retest you know 20 25 points lower from where we are now at the next support at around 2860 or are we going to continue this rally now that the markets did pull back now that the markets did see this slight cool off so this is a pretty interesting spot if we're looking on the 20 day one hour you guys can see it as well and going back or going down to a smaller time frame on the 10 day 30 minute notice how we saw the huge rally we all know that by now we pulled back today we saw that little cool off period and we maintain the 50 SMA here on the 10 day 30 minute chart so this is a good sign that the uptrend is still intact if we do break this though to the downside and we break down below 
2870, which is a support from the 7th of June. If we start to break down into the 2850 level, that's going to be a pretty alarming sign. And from there, I could definitely see more selling off for the S&P 500. So now we did pretty much get the little cool off that we needed. Still, it's overbought. This, this little pullback that we saw doesn't really bring the RSI as far down as we want it to be. Which means, guys, I still think there is more need of cooling off here for the market. So this could be the start of a cool off se uh, 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 period in time here where we do sell off a bit. Or this could just be the little pullback before we launch up to potentially test all-time highs right now. So it's pretty volatile, the markets. Anything can happen. The markets have been seeming a bit irrational lately. So this is leading me to believe... Anything can really happen. I wouldn't be surprised if we launched up at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if we sold off drastically because, again, these markets don't make much sense nowadays, right? So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we can see, again... The, the the run was absolutely insane. We saw yesterday, I talked about it in yesterday's video, markets moved up between 6 and 8% over the past couple of days uh, in terms of the three that I talk about on this channel. And the Dow was struggling to get out of the 26,200 level of resistance yesterday. And you guys can see it closed right under that level today. And if we look on the five-day, five-minute here, notice how we kind of have a double top here on the Dow Jones and we're sort of holding this this very small range uh, on the Dow from twenty six thousand to twenty six thousand two hundred dollars. Notice the double bottom here at twenty six thousand two hundred, solidifying it as a strong support, and notice the double top at twenty six thousand two hundred, solidifying that as a strong resistance. So now that we're in such a tight window. These two levels, the 26,200 and 26,000 flat, these levels are going to determine which direction the Dow is moving in over these next couple of days, right? If we start to sell off and we break back into the 25,000 level, this can uh, issue a sell off all the way down to 25,500, which is the next support. But let's say we pop above 26,200 and we break out of that level of resistance, out of that double top here, that can get us up to 26,500 on the Dow Jones. So tomorrow, very, very important day for uh, trading here in terms of the major markets. It's going to be a very interesting day to see how everything ends up playing off. So that's pretty much it for the Dow Jones here. The NASDAQ, which has been the talk of the town due to it being the hottest index right now, in the United States stock market, at least the ones that I track, the NASDAQ went absolutely crazy, right? NASDAQ tech stocks, they've been soaring. This one's been up about 8 9% over the past couple of days itself. We've seen Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Google. They've been absolutely killing it over the past couple of days, bringing up the tech-heavy uh, uh, index, which is the NASDAQ here. So take a look how, again, over the past couple of days, we've been getting very very overbought to the point where the RSI was at 85. And for those of you guys that know the RSI, anything above 70 is extremely, extremely overbought. And that's what the NASDAQ was at. We notice how we broke that 180 simple moving average resistance here. And if we're just going a bit closer on the 20 day, one hour chart, we can see just like I believe the Dow this one is also holding a mover a moving average support on the smaller time frame chart. So this could be a good sign that we're just cooling off a bit before the continuation of the uptrend based on the fact that we're holding it right now as a support. So tomorrow, again, it's going to be very critical for the NASDAQ as well. You know, you see a, a common occurrence in today's video. The three major indexes right now, they're all at critical spots that can change the, the trajectory of the... Um, trend once we break one of these spots or we go above one of these spots it's literally two two different things can happen either two things can happen tomorrow and they're going to really uh 
tell us as traders, as people doing technical analysis, whether the stock market is going to continue this bull run it's been on for the past four days or whether or not it's going to pull off, uh, pull back and cool off a bit. So tomorrow, if we break this 50 SMA to the downside, we break that level of support, that's going to be a pretty big uh, bearish sign in my opinion. We could sell off from there. But again, if we hold it, we start to pop. That's just simply the continuation of the uptrend here on the NASDAQ. So going a bit closer, five day, five minute, you guys can see we're holding very nicely the support at about $7,500. We held that on the 10th of June, which was yesterday. And today we ended up uh, holding it again as the NASDAQ uh, started to sell off from that gap up that we saw this morning. So that's a pretty good sign that we are holding that level of support. Let's say we sell off and we break it. That's going to be a pretty alarming sign for the downside because if that happens and we go back to the 10-day, 30-minute, or rather the 20-day, 1-hour, if we get the break on the smaller time frame uh, chart of 7,500, that's going to, be, going to be breaking us below this 50 SMA here on the 20-day, 1-hour. So that's the market update for today, guys. Markets, they kind of cooled off a bit. They didn't run up again. They didn't gap up. They didn't sell off heavily, but they just stood and kind of stayed where... They ended up closing yesterday. So that's interesting. I would love to know what you guys have to think and have to say about the markets right now. And let's talk about the really uneventful day that I had today in terms of my trading. We didn't have a crazy day, like I just said. A lot of the stocks, they were kind of boring today. But I did end up playing McDonald's, which I did call out in my earlier video earlier today that I uploaded. And for those of you guys that don't know, I upload videos um, sometimes times in the beginning of the day, middle of the day. So if you guys didn't know that, keep in touch or keep in tune for those videos. I do go over some of my plays for that day and the coming days in those earlier videos. And I know a bunch of you guys um, view the later videos more than the earlier videos. But just for that, those that don't know, I do upload um, earlier videos once in a while, a couple of times a week. So let's talk about that McDonald's play that I was talking about earlier in today's video. And this is literally uh, uh, earlier uh, in the video earlier today. And this was literally one of my smallest trades that I've had in a while, guys. Again, it was an uneventful day for me. We saw the pullback on McDonald's uh, yesterday, I believe, or the day before, which actually opened up a nice opportunity, in my opinion, for uh, a pullback trade, a uh, potential dip buy. We got the dip from 206 down to about $200 flat, where if we look on the one day or 184 hour chart very quickly, we see as we bottomed out at $200, that was putting us right at the 50 SMA level of support. Very nice there. And from there, we confirmed a very strong bounce, uh, really just continuing this uptrend that it's been on, McDonald's has been on here over the past couple of months. Notice how the 50 SMA has been a support pretty much 80% of the time here over the past couple of months, which when I saw the pullback and the hold above that level of the 50 SMA support, it opened up my eyes for a potential entry here. And pretty much, guys, you know, we were gapping up pre-market. We pulled back as the market opened, and we found a level of support here that was at a higher low from yesterday's low here. And notice how if I draw out a trend line, you know, it was kind of riding this trend line in a way, riding this start of a reversal that McDonald's started towards the end of the day trading yesterday. And let me show you guys what I mean by that. If we're looking on the five day, five minute, notice how we sold off aggressively, moving averages were acting as resistance levels here. We noticed the bearish cross. And then we found a bottom yesterday at about $200, and we started to reverse out of the resistance, which was the EMA line right here. And then we closed the day on a strong upswing out of the 50 SMA. So that was a good sign yesterday that we were potentially finding a bottom and looking to pop up from there. And when we gapped up this morning, I was like, okay, McDonald's here. This one's definitely looking like it wants to continue its push. Then we got the pullback. We got 
the uh, potential entry point where I ended up getting in, and I just held this one for a couple of hours today without a huge gain, to be completely honest with you guys. I got in on this first pullback here at about 201. I was red, or not 201 exactly, it was about like 201, uh, like 56 or something like that. It was very quick, the entry point I got in on this dip right here, bought up, and then I was red for a little bit of this position, or very, uh, not, maybe not red, I was more close to just break even for a decent hour, hour and a half after I got in, and then we started to pick up the pace as the hours moved on, and this is typically, um, odd for me, because I'm not really holding day trades a lot of the time for multiple hours like I did today, this is kind of like an all-day swing trade in a sense, so I got in here, ended up selling off for like a point five or something, 0. 0.6, not even 0. 0.6, because I sold off right around 203.06, so it was about, I would say like a 0. 0.5, 0. 0.55% profit, which is not my best, right, but anything in my eyes where my account is moving in the right direction, and in this case, the right direction is green, anything where I'm making profits, I, I can live with that, right, I'm really happy with that, so today, 0.5%, although my goal is roughly 1, 1 1.5, 2% on uh, my day trades. I didn't hit the goal today, but it's still a step in the right direction, and I'm happy about it with ticker symbol MCD. And this is actually one, honestly, guys, that could open up for a great opportunity tomorrow as well. This could be a, a uh, stock that continues to rally, and who knows, it might crack 207 here in the next couple of days because we've noticed how as the markets have been getting crushed, Crushed. You know, they got crushed the whole month of May. Notice how McDonald's didn't get affected whatsoever. Notice how McDonald's literally appreciated in price as the market was selling off. It literally went from about $194 and then towards the end of um, May before this big dump, we were at $200, so it appreciated about $6, um, and then it started to dump a little bit, but still, after this dump, it was still um, higher than it was at the beginning of the month as the markets as a whole were dumping, so that just goes to show the strength of McDonald's stock during times of volatility, during times when the market is selling off pretty aggressively, so McDonald's, I'm watching this one for sure over the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, you got I saw in the title of today's video, you guys is actually looking like it could be reversing here and it could be breaking out. And let me just talk about this one for a little bit here. And for those of you guys that don't know, you guys, ticker symbol UGAZ, it's an inverse ETF and its inverse is DGAZ, DGAZ. And they both trade based upon natural gas, slash NG, the natural gas futures. And notice how natural gas, if we go to the 30 day, 90 minute chart, it's been getting clobbered over the past 30 days over the past month notice how we peaked at 270 we sold off all the way to 230 about a 40 cent drop which is very big that's about a 15 percent drop there in the price of natural gas and we were getting rejected by all moving averages, the EMA, the exponential moving average here, the SMAs, the 50 SMA, and the 180 SMA. And now, after we bottomed at about 230, we got a couple of confirming factors that, hey, we may be pushing up, we may be changing the trend here. The first one was the double bottom here. Remember, a double bottom is telling us, okay, a stock is making a new support now, and whenever it pops from that double bottom, that's a pretty bullish move, and notice how we got the double bottom, I guess you can argue this is a triple bottom, and then we started to get the break out of the 50 SMA, which is the second confirming factor, so we got the new support, the break, and now we're starting to hold the 50 SMA as a new support, and we're making higher lows and higher highs as we push to a higher high here today, so those those are a couple confirming factors that natural gas as a whole right now is reversing to the upside. Now, one thing that could potentially happen here is we may pop up, 
get hit at 245 by the 180 SMA, and then we might start to get rejected and sell off again. This is a very possible thing that could happen here, but let's say we end up popping and breaking that 180 SMA. That's literally the only level of resistance headed uh, in our way right now before we start to head up to previous highs, maybe at 260, 270 for natural gas. And we all know at this point, Natural gas, whenever it's going up, U gas is going up in price as well. And notice how U gas has been getting rejected by the 50 SMA, 180 SMA over these past couple of trading days. And now we're finally seeming like we found a bottom at 1650. We're reversing above the 50 SMA. That's a confirming factor. We found a bottom. We pretty much have been making higher highs and higher lows through the resistance of the 50 SMA. And this is all looking very, very solid right now. So pay attention at this point, guys. You know, there's a big margin to fill up here to the next resistance, which is the 180 SMA. But be careful because if natural gas does start getting rejected at about 244, 245, this can start heading down very quickly. So you guys right now, it's looking very good. It's so close to being at a point where it's fully reversing. And once we get the break on natural gas, if we get the break, you know, I think it can be a very good play in the next couple of days, next couple of weeks. And another thing that can happen here, guys, is we pull back a bit and make another <clears throat> higher low, maybe at about 235, and retest that 50 SMA before we continue the uptrend. That would be a pretty ideal scenario, actually, if we get in on the pullback as natural gas is pulling back, you guys will pull back and open up an even better entry point, and from there, we can ride it up to the potential resistance point at the 180 SMA for a quick little gain, and once we break the 180 SMA, we can re-enter and ride it up for the reversal at that point in time. So that's kind of my thoughts right now on you gas, natural gas. It's looking very solid, but we're not quite there yet for a full on reversal. So that is probably the main ETF in terms of inverse ETFs that I'm watching for tomorrow. Another one that I'm watching is JNUG. JNUG's at an interesting spot right now. Um, notice how on this 20 day, one hour chart, we actually bounced very aggressively uh, above or on the uh, 180 SMA here, we noticed the pullback as gold has been pulling back from 1350 down to about, let's see where it closed today, I believe, yeah, about 1330. That brought down JNUG, and now that gold uh, did a little bit better today. I don't know if it closed green. Yeah, it did. Uh, we can see it bottomed at about 1323, popped up to about 1330, which I'm guessing is why um, JNUG saw that pop. So tomorrow, guys, very simple. You know, JNUG and gold, they're both under 50 SMA resistance levels right now. You guys can see if we break out of that, that's going to be a pretty bullish move here on JNUG. Going back to gold, Let's see where gold is at very quickly. Yeah, you guys can see it right here. You know, pretty much basic technicals here. If we break out of the 50, that's going to be a pretty bullish move. And be careful here because this could be the start of a bearish cross, especially since um, it's looking like it wants to curl down below the 180 SMA. I'd be very careful about that. So let's say we end up gapping down. The futures end up selling off in the morning and we see that and we get the bullish cross and we slowly start to push for another, you know, lower low on gold, that can open up a huge move on JDST, which goes up whenever gold is selling off. So that's another play that I'm personally looking at right now. JDST, this can be good if we do get that confirmation of the sell-off heading into tomorrow for the gold futures. So let me look at my phone very quickly because I did write some other stocks. Oh, AMD, that's another one. So AMD, guys, this one has been on a tear. It hit 34.30 and now we're pulling back a bit uh, to about $31. And I was getting some questions about AMD over the past couple of days. So I figured let's talk about it right now because AMD, for all you guys that have been following it for the past month or two months, it's been stuck in this level between $28, $27, and $30, right? Roughly that $3 level. And since then, you know, we exploded past it. We hit the high again at about $34.30, higher than the level that we were at in September. And now it seems like the stock
stock is cooling off a bit. So this is looking like an opportunity where, you know, you could potentially get in a long trade on AMD if we pull back enough and test either $30 as a support maybe $31 on the uh, 50 SMA because I'm guessing it's going to rise a bit, maybe up to here. And at that point, we might be able to bounce on top of it. This could be a pretty good entry point if we pull back and confirm the bounce on the moving averages. Because at this point, since we broke out of all the other levels of resistance, these levels of resistance, the old levels, they are now new support. So if we pretty much confirm them as support levels, you know, at that, at that point, in time, we could be reversing back up to those highs and the margin of profit at that point is going to be pretty nice. So that's pretty much it. For today's video, guys, you know, I'm interested in seeing what this market is going to do. The market's been so funky. I just think it's been irrational in some sense. I'm interested to see, you know, are we going to pull back and continue maybe a panic selling phase? Like, I don't even know anymore at this point. I'm really excited to see, though, if we start to sell off aggressively, you know, I have my market ETFs on deck. You know, gold might spike up if we start to sell off aggressively like it did um, a couple of weeks ago we saw gold literally go from like 1275 to 1350 in the matter of a couple of weeks you know we can see a move maybe to 1400 who knows right because gold's considered a safe haven in the stock market and investments in terms of asset classes a lot of people view it as safe during a um, panic time in the market Prices go, could go up like crazy, right? So I'm really excited, guys. And if you guys enjoyed the video, if you enjoy the content, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Drop a comment. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about today's video. Any questions, concerns, stocks you're trading, thoughts on the markets, moves you're looking to make, I would love to know. And if you enjoy the content, you want to see more from me, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. Thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate every single one of you doing so. Peace out.